All right, spatial cinema. Spatial cinema is a way of using AR to do two things. One, you're creating a film, you're creating a project. And secondly, you're creating a form of location-based entertainment or location-based education, a location-based AR experience. Meaning that once the film is done, it goes out and gets distributed. But the location itself can become an AR experience for people. As long as you're using a permanent uh, AR platform like GeoPose, like Augmented City, other people can come and watch the thing that you made, the AR project that you made. A little bit difficult to understand, but hopefully this video will clear that up with examples. All right, spatial cinema. Augmented City has been, uh, this whole experience has been a dream and they're a big part of this. Uh, not just great people, not just technically super, but they have mapped a hundred square kilometers in body Italy for AR. And this has just happened this year. It's historic. It's one of the first cities in the world. Or it's the first city in the world to be mapped this extensively. They've mapped other cities. Um, Amsterdam, Moscow, I think some things are happening in America. But imagine, you know, for four, four years thinking about augmented reality and the possibilities and now to suddenly be working with them to create projects. It's really exciting. But they're committed towards mapping cities around the world and then providing uh, users the ability to see information, tourist information, all kinds of city-related information, and uh, it's great.
we're doing is not video, it's not we're not making commercials, we're not making games. And the spatial cinema requires a special skill set. And Nova B has that skill set down to a T. It's pioneering and we're all learning as we go along, but really they've got a solid foundation from their own experiences in San Francisco and Washington and other places around the world where they know the differences between make put they know the difference between putting a model in the real world and putting the model in a game or putting the model in a commercial or doing something for a traditional client. They're pioneers and yet they've got a solid base and really Bubico would not be where she is today if it weren't for the, the, the team at Nova B. Their motto is make it real and they've helped make Bubico real. They've helped make Bubico fly, literally. These are images of Nova Bay's project in San Francisco where they used AR to recreate the Black Hawk Jazz Club. That's where Dave Brubeck used to play. Now it's a parking lot and with the magic of AR they're returning the Black Hawk as well as making a community art project. Hi, View. I'm Jan Erik, the Managing Director of the Open Air Cloud Association. First of all, I'm very thankful for the great work that my friend Stephen Black and his team has been doing to promote spatial cinema and geopose. Not only that, but Bubico Futur's artwork in Bar, Italy is the very first content created to run on the very first experimental open spatial web platform. It could become the equivalent of the very first web page demonstrated 30 years ago in CERN back in 1990. But instead of a text document, it is an entirely new form of art that offers a shared experience at the city scale. So even though I'm a software engineer by education, artistic expression is close to my heart. Back in the mid 90s, when I was a teenager, I made surrealistic 3D artworks for the Norwegian primetime TV. I believe that by building a spatial web based on open standards and protocols with GeoPost at its core, we could upgrade the world into a shared spatial canvas to unleash a digital renaissance with a flourishing of entirely new forms of art. But we have to step carefully because the technology that enables this relies on constant reality capture. If we allow governments or corporations or other entities to aggregate such sensitive data about ourselves and our communities, we could end up living in a digital prison. So that is why the volunteers of Open Air Cloud are working very hard to make sure that our privacy, security, freedom and dignity can be protected to truly make the spatial computer computing era into a digital golden age. Hi, I'm Susan Oslin and I am the Vice Chair of the UX Accessibility and Safety Working Group for the Open Air Cloud. And I am thrilled to see Bubico premiere at our testbed in Italy and to see after two years of hard work uh, what's theoretical that we've been talking about and discussing in theory, what is the open spatial uh, web, what is the open spatial computing platform to see it realized and see our vision realized with a uh, spatial cinema, it's really exciting. I just wonder and hope if Brad Bird happens to be in the audience and sees this and gets inspired what he might create. Uh, it would be so amazing to actually be physically in one of Brad Bird's films and have it be surrounded and maybe even interact with uh, the Iron Giant. I had the, the, pre the pr I had the privilege and pleasure to work with Brad on the Iron Giant. So I would really be delighted to see what he could come up with for this platform. <laughs> Okay, next I'm gonna show you a slowed down clip from Bubico's first flight. And look at the bottom of the frame, you can see some of the existing work that Augmented City's already been doing. And then of course you'll see Bubico in her blimp. So again, this is slowed down a little bit, but it gives you some idea of what we're trying to do, what we're building. Uh, 
Um, first of all, it was a great honor to be uh, invited to speak at VIEW, a fantastic honor. And I thought the best way to really exemplify what AR is about is to do an installation at the venue, the OGR building in Turin, Italy. And so I immediately started thinking, how can I do this? And to, to actually do it, I needed a company or a person or a program or someone to help me map OGR and then to plot Bubico's walk or adventure within that space. And I really had no idea how to do that. And I contacted Jan Eric at uh, the Open Air Cloud uh, organization and he gave me a couple names and Augmented City is in Italy. Augmented City does exactly what I was hoping to do. <laughs> and they were, they were very supportive. Um, so uh, the plan was to go to OGR, view, and map Bubico in this space. Now, Bubico walking is okay, but I had the idea of her flying so that she could cover a larger area. And also, because what we want to do is make it available to multi-users, if she's flying, one person, 10 people, 100 people can look at that at the same time. That's a very important point I wanted to make about spatial cinema, about the potential of augmented reality. So we thought, okay, we'll make this blimp and Nova B, the Seattle-based company, Julia, all those people, her team is great. We came up with this idea. Sayuri helped me with the design. So Bubico is going to fly around the inside of, of, of OGR building. And um, then, of course, <clears throat> the virus hit. And I had to think because I had already bought a ticket allowing for the 14-day quarantine. So I came here two weeks before that in order to be safe and observe the, the regulations. And then uh, we realized that if I'm going to be in quarantine, I should do it in a city called Bari, B-A-R-I, Italy, which is where Augmented City is based. And then in this little room, we started to plot and go, you know, I'd say go to the city and shoot this. And gradually we gathered the footage of Bubico flying around uh, Bari. And the cafe was a, was a great location that... Uh, that we discovered. So uh, quarantine's done, film's being shot, and now in the process of editing, and it's very exciting. It is the first example of spatial cinema. And by that, I mean that even though a film version will exist, that people can go to that cafe six months from now, six years from now, and still see Bubico flying around. So very, very exciting, very difficult. Uh, technologically, we're doing historic things, and I'm so thankful to all the people that supported this and helped make Bubico's first flight happen. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, View, for letting me make this presentation and triggering this whole sequence. That fisherman is real. He's not a digital avatar, but maybe next year I can come here and make a digital fisherman. That would be an example of spatial cinema. A spatial cinema fishing show.